Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today, well before we start with what I'm playing with today, apologies for no uh, videos over the um, last, what, about a month or so. Um, as some of you know I do have a bit of a fatigue issue um, and I <laughs> basically I overdid it. Um, I wanted to do some work in the garden, um, I wanted to, I'm building some raised beds basically. Um, obviously I want to do some more um, gardening like I did some gardening videos last year um, I want to produce more of my own um, veg this year than I did last year so um, I thought I'd start early in the season um, clearing out some border plants that I didn't really want anymore and start constructing, constructing some uh, raised beds um, I managed to get hold of um, about a Pallets worth about a ton of bricks uh, for free, um, salvage bricks. Um, so I had to basically go to where the building, uh, well, the outbuilding was being demolished, um, load all the bricks up, uh, bring them home, clean them, um, get them ready for my use. Um, I did all that. I um, dug half the foundations for my walls, I put all the foundation for the walls and to start actually building my um, raised beds and then my fatigue kind of hit me and <laughs> um, I couldn't do very much for the next three weeks um, literally um, yeah it's, <laughs> it wasn't particularly good I mean I wasn't exactly completely ridden to my bed or anything but um, any more than perhaps a couple of hours um, of doing anything strenuous and I was utterly utterly exhausted for the rest of the uh, well, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the next couple of days. So I've had to kind of really, really take it easy um, over over a bit of time. Um, couple that to the fact that um, where I live, it, I won't say I'm in a rural area, but I'm on the very, very outskirts of suburbia. And um, over the last few years, they keep trying to um, upgrade our um, broadband infrastructure. And earlier on last month, we did get a message round that uh, there may be some slight interruptions in the um, broadband in the area as they updated some of the uh, some of the infrastructure. Uh, it's kind of resulted in um, a lot of the people in the village, uh, unless you were on um, Virgin uh, Fiber, um, just for everybody else in the village has been having quite bad um, connection issues, um, me included, to the point where I've struggled to watch videos on YouTube at anything over like 240p resolution, 40, you know, 480 was really, really pushing it. Um, fortunately, uh, over the last couple of days, um, it has seemed to have improved somewhat. I can actually watch videos in um, 720p again and it not just glitch out every couple of seconds. So I'm making this video now so um, more of a test to see if um, actually a video will upload um, onto YouTube on the, um, the connection at the moment. Like I say, it does seem to have um, stabilised now. It was to the point where some days um, it was taking half an hour just to bring like the Gmail, my Gmail screen up. Um, it was pretty bad. Um, quite a few people have been um, complaining about it, but then the next day it would seem like it was improving, but only for half the day, and then all of a sudden it'd be back to um, absolutely terrible again. But like I said, over the last couple of days it does seem to have improved. Like I said, I can actually stream uh, videos on YouTube in a reasonable resolution now. Um, so like I said, I'll hopefully be able to um, upload this video. Anyway, um, I went and popped over to see my mate Andy um, over at Vintage Electronics Repair um, the other day. Um, he gave me a bell during the week saying would I take this um, Acorn Electron off his hands. So um, I had a couple of old amplifiers which um, I knew Andy would uh, appreciate more than me. I mean one of them's been sat in my um in my round to it to do pile for probably about 15 years so um i offered him a couple of broken amplifiers um for the acorn and um he said yeah great so we've got um i've got an acorn electron 
Um, I actually, <laughs> I do actually own another two um, Acorn Electrons, um, but the both of the ones I've got, they both work. Um, they both work quite nicely. Um, but both of them, the cases are horrifically, horrifically yellowed. Um, this one, amazingly, um, it's actually in really, really nice condition. Um, it hasn't really yellowed at all. Um, I presume it's been kept some, you know, it's been kept somewhere out of light. Um, it's also in really nice condition. Both of the ones that I've got, um, they must have been stored in a box with like the leads crunched up on top of them and they've both got the classic um, lines in the case that look like soldering iron burns and what it is it's um, basically it's the plastic it's oils in the plastic when it's curled up touching for a long long time will actually leach into another plastic and um, distort the plastic and that's why you end up with them marks in a lot of like vintage um, electronics which is in plastic cases uh, this this one actually there's none of it at all. It is in like I say it's in superb condition. Um, now I'm not really going to have to do very much to this computer, um, Andy. In fact, uh, what I will say is um, go and pop over onto Andy's channel, um, Vintage Electronics Repair, and you can actually watch what Andy um, has already done to this computer. Because I mean, when he got it, it wasn't exactly in bad condition, like as you can see, but it had a few bad keys on it. Um, so he's done um, some repair work to the keyboard. There's one key which I'm going to have to um, address because it's a little bit iffy and he did tell me about that. Um, he's also done the um, colour composite mod on this so it does actually um, output a colour um, composite picture. So you can see, you know, if you go over onto his channel you can see all the work that he's done on it um, already. Um, like I said, the reason I wanted it um, really, apart from the fact that Andy didn't want it anymore, it was um, well, like I say, it was in super condition. It did come with um, some original software, which um, I've not got a whole mount of um, original um, Acorn Electron software. Um, I've got plenty of BBC software on disk. Um, obviously, with um, SD, you've got. Um, access to just about everything they ever um, produced for the um, BBC Micro um, but the Electron, unless you want to spend some money on quite an expensive interface to actually plug an SD um, adapter into it or an even more expensive interface so you can actually connect the disk drive up to it um, really you're kind of stuck with tapes um, or WAV files or audio files played off a computer whatever you um, want but it's quite nice to have some original um, box software um, for it. In fact, that's just I'm just having a play at the moment, really, just seeing what this software, what software um, Andy give me, I can actually get to run. Um, I've just been trying this um, this boxes. In fact, we've just gone through um, that side of it, and that doesn't seem to have um, that doesn't seem to have loaded. We'll try we'll try the other side. Um, let's just uh, restart the. Um, we'll restart the um, electron or elk. I, prefer, I, I believe um, they, get, they used to get referred to as an elk, the um, acorn electron. Um, right, we need to type chain. So it's not quite um, actually having the um, instructions. It actually does give you a, the loading instructions. You could possibly get it to um, load using the load and double quote marks, but it won't load correctly. Um, this is actually how you correctly load it. Um, chain, and then we type shift, and then we type the name of the game, which is Boxer, B-O-X-E-R. Now that's what I'm saying there. This key needs um, so you know you have to really fiddle with it to get it to actually work but like I say I was aware of that it's not an issue um, we might have a look at rebuilding that key keycap if we can't get the keycap to rebuild I'll um, just put a new one in I think I've got a couple of um, new old stock um, key switches for this um, we will press enter and we will um, press play on the tape recorder that's what we'll um, look at next, tape recorder. Now Andy did give me um, a tape recorder. I've been having, basically I've been having fun with tape recorders um, trying to actually start doing this video. Um, Andy did get a tape recorder with this um, computer when he got it. 
The story behind the computer. Basically, um, my mate Andy, he repair he repairs vintage audio gear and um, like I said, go and check his channel out if you don't know it already. Um, I think he repaired a jukebox for somebody and uh, they mentioned that they'd um, found this acorn electron in an attic and um, well it's got so far um, was Andy interested in it and I think Andy offered him 40 quid or something for it and the guy offered you know he um, took um, he took what um, Andy offered him for it uh, like I said, Andy isn't really massively into uh, vintage computers or anything, but I think he just fancied having um, a bit of a fiddle. Um, so that's how um, Andy ended up with it. And like I said, he um, had a fiddle, he's had his fun with it, and then um, decided uh, it was time to pass it on. Asked me whether I'd um, take it on, so I said, yeah, go on and have a um, play with it. Anyway, um, it did come with um, this cassette player, which is a... Um, it's a Matsui Slimline. These aren't particularly bad um, cassette players usually. Now, when Andy got it, what he did say is the um, figure of ed eight power input there uh, was actually broken on it, and he didn't have an one that had fit it. So he's just hardwired a um, mains lead in to try and get it working. Now he did tell me this it's not working properly, and I did have a fiddle with it. Um, and the problem with it is that the um, the take up sticks on, sticks on it so it's basically it's running and then the take up will stop but the capstan will carry on running and it will chew the tape up. Uh, it's quite a common problem with these particular players. So I thought not to worry, that's no problem at all because it just so happens I've got exactly the same uh, Matsui player here which I, um, I repaired this a few years ago and got it working really nicely. Um, so I dug this out, thought I'll just put this into service with it and it's doing exactly the same thing so I'm going to have to go back through this player as well so we may be doing a video on um, perhaps looking at both these players even I'm not sure if I've got a figure of eight that will fit that I think I have because I've got a box of ones I've salvaged off scrap players over the years but um, and that, to be honest, I'm not bothered about the um, ability to use batteries, so we no, don't really have to worry about the um, battery cutoff switch. Uh, I'll just wire the battery connectors out and just um, have it for mains, because like I said, these I just use these with um, old computers. But um, no, um, my one which I thought was absolutely um, hunky dory fine there. Um, that is doing exactly the same thing, so like I said, that is going to have to have um, a look at it as well. So I thought, right, we'll take a gamble. I um, I dug that one out. That's um, a realistic. Um, I must admit a gamble because I don't can't remember the last time I tried that one. I presume I think, I'm pretty sure it did work okay. Um, Unfortunately, now um, totally dead. Um, I, when you power it up, this is this one basically. Um, this doesn't use the mains. It's either battery or it actually ha takes a um, six volt DC adapter in the side there. Um, I plugged the six volt DC adapter in. Um, when you press play, you can hear the amplifier click. You hear a pop from the amplifier, but apart from that, it does absolutely nothing. So we have yet another um, tape recorder which is going to need some um, service and repair. Ah, that's actually loaded. Lovely. So that's the first game that I've um, tried from um, Andy. Uh, in fact, we'll go back to that. We'll carry on with the tape recorder saga. Anyway, so we tried that one. So next, that didn't work. I pulled this one out. Now this is actually a modern um, cassette recorder. Now don't believe the fact that it says Bush on it. It has got absolutely nothing to do with the company um, Bush from days of old. I don't think I've got a Bush near me here to show you but um, basically what happened was um, sometime in the mid 2000s um, a catalogue company in the UK called Argos um, bought the rights to use the um, Bush brand name and basically went to whichever cheap Chinese manufacturer could supply things cheaply and says uh, we want you know 
hundred thousand of them made stick the Bush brand on them. Uh, so this is a really cheap um, modern cassette player. Uh, the only interesting thing about it is, um, if you see, it's got USB on it. Um, this is not the type of thing I would normally buy. Um, the only reason I've got this is a while back, a few years ago, I bought a, a huge job lot of um, faulty, um, basically faulty catalogue returns, Argos catalogue return stuff. I got tons and tons and tons of um, stuff and most of it was five minute fixes there was you know if I couldn't fix it in five minutes I broke it up for spares and this this come out of that lot um, I think the power connector there was a dry joint on the power connector something something ridiculously simple like that so um, I repaired it and um, I've used this for with spectrums no problem at all. Um, it's loaded Spectrum software on them, all 48Ks, no problem at all. Nice thing I like about it is, um, like I say, it's, it's reasonably modern. Uh, I don't have to worry about it chewing tapes or anything. Like I say, it does see, it's awful and tinny and, you know, it's not as good as um, the older players, but um, it's got USB on it, which means you can stick a um, USB stick in. Um, hit record on the USB, hit play, and actually just record the way the you know, record the audio um, from the tape to the USB stick, stick it in Audacity, and then play about with it on the computer. So it's a just an easy, simple way of getting um, some audio off tapes. Like the record, the recording is pretty awful. You have to fiddle about with it a bit, but. Um, I've messed about with it with, for things like that, and like I said, it always seems to have loaded software when I've been messing about with my old Spectrums. Tried it on the um, Electron, and I couldn't get, I just couldn't get anything I've tried messing about with um, to load. So, I dug out Old Faithful. Now, this is, I'll show you, this is Old Faithful. Um, I've had this one since um, probably the early 90s. When I first got, st basically, when I first got into collecting older computers, where I first got my, um, I think it was my first uh, 48k Spectrum that I picked up at a car boot sale. Um, I, I can't actually remember whether it was this one or an identical one to it. Um, it could possibly what had been this one but I've, I've gone through that many tape recorders over the year I can't be a hundred percent sure but it was one of these um, basically it's a Philips um, computer co computer compatible um, mono cassette player uh, I mean it's, it is set out for use with a computer um, we have um, record and it even says save next to it and then rewind review, uh, fast forward, cue, stop eject and then play and it's loads, you know, record. Um, this basically, if um, I've got a game that's marginal, um, you know, perhaps it's not been stored so well, um, and other tape players are failing to load. Um, many times I've tried it on that and I've got it to load with that one. I tried that with the um, Acorn as you can see. Um, it's loaded straight, well it's not loaded straight up, it, um, one side of this tape obviously may have an issue with it but I tried the other side of it and um, it is working so this is Boxer, this is the first tape I've actually um, so the first one of these I've actually um, tried loading um, other thing I, I was uh, wanted to try Another reason I quite wanted um, this Acorn is it came with this. Um, this is a first byte um, Acorn Electron joystick interface. Now I've never seen one of these before. I do have an Acorn Electron joystick interface which I've got actually plugged in at the back um, there because I want to see if I could get it to work with this Acorn. But um, after that I think I'll try perhaps this first byte one. Like I said I've, not, um, I've never tried um, well, I've never seen, sorry, um, an aftermarket um, electron um, joystick interface before. And it's nice. I mean, it's actually got its original box. It's a little bit beaten up, but I've got the original box for it. Um, but at the moment, like I say, I've got the one that I, um, I had that I got with one of my other Acorn electrons, which I, I don't think I've ever actually tried. Um, people that don't know... 
Basically, the Acorn Electron is a very pared down BBC Micro. It was designed for the home market. It was a total flop and um, it lost Acorn. I mean, it basically wrecked the company, um, the Acorn Electron. Uh, they tried to do things like the Spectrum, so um, if you wanted a joystick interface, you actually had to buy a separate thing that plugged into the back of the computer. Um, it was not 100% compatible with um, BBC Micro software, you had to have Electron versions of it, they were off, often actually inferior to the version that came out on the um, BBC Micro. Um, we'll see whether we can get this game to actually um, work though, um, and they even give me a joystick, it's a later model quick shot, is it a Mark 3 I think, Mark 2 or a Mark 3 um, quick shot, but uh, we'll give that a try as well. Right, um, let's see if this um, joystick interface is going to actually work. So, um, use S and Q to turn the sound on and off. Let's, we've got sound on, I don't know. Um, press space bar or fire to start. Let's try fire. And perhaps my um, joystick interface isn't actually um, working. Let's try space bar. Oh, well, I don't know. Alright, so there's my fella. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, but I don't think my... Um No, I don't think my um, joystick's doing anything. This is a funny boxing game. I think it is meant to be a boxing game. It does say on the box that it's also it's meant to be um, compatible with a um, keyboard or a joystick. So I wonder if that old joystick interface of mine isn't actually working. So what we'll do, um, we'll try that joystick interface that um, I got with the actual computer, and we'll see if that actually um, that actually works. So what I'm going to do, um, I'll pause the video. I'll um, swap the joystick interfaces over. I'll get it loaded up again, and we'll just see if that joystick interface actually um, works. And we may be able to do a repair. Not in this video. But we may have a look at see why my um, joystick interface isn't working. So um, back in a sec. Okay, we're back where uh, we're back where we were. Now I've got the um, what's it? The first byte interface plugged in this time, connected back up to the um, joystick, and I've just let the software um, load. So we've got Boxer back up again. So let's have a look here, because um, I couldn't remember what. Um, so we've got Z and X as a left and right. Um, ah, it's um, colon and um, backslash are up and down. But hopefully this time, with any um, with any luck, this joystick interface may um, actually work. So let's try. No. Let me try a different joystick. I've got one here that definitely, definitely works. Just in case um, that joystick that Andy gave me is um, no good. Because I mean, I haven't tested it on anything else, so. Now, you shouldn't technically do this, it is a bit naughty swapping your joysticks um, like this, but we'll, uh, we'll risk it this time. Let's plug in. There we go, that's plugged in there. Let's give this a try. So no, um, we haven't got any actual, we haven't got the joystick working at all, unfortunately. Uh, so that's something I'm going to have to look into, like I said, um, neither that joystick interface there or 
that joystick that <laughs> joystick interface that actually came with it uh, do appear to be working. Um, like I said that's something we can um, that's something we can look in, look at. Let's have another quick play with the game anyway. Um, see, I can actually see how you move up and down now. So let's start. Let's see if we can get sound on. Right. So, dream. so how do you go? Ah, there we go. So down. I'm not even sure what you meant to do here, but. Graphics don't look too bad actually, to be fair. Um, like I said, I don't think the Acorn Electron was ever um, really very good for its. Um, she can't get get to her. I should have really read the instructions. You can't get off on certain. Yeah, well. Um, Carry on, see what we can do. And we die. Straight away we go splat. <laughs> well that is, um, that's Boxer um, on the Akine Electron. Um, yeah, I suppose, I, next, before I play that again, I suppose I actually better um, read the instructions. But um, that's, that's one of the games that he um, Andy gave me with the um, system. As well as that, we've also got, um, and I've not tried, that is, this is actually the first thing I've actually got to load um, on this um, Electron since I got it. Uh, we also have Maze, like I said, original, um, in its box. So, well, that one, um, in fact, if you want me to do another video on this, uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to my viewers. Um, do you want to see this Electron again? Do you want to see us perhaps try, trying some of this, more of this software that I've actually got for it? Um, we've got Maze here, um, which I presume is a Maze game. Um, we have got... Ah, uh, right, we've got... Arcadians here, um, but we haven't actually got the tape. Apparently, Andy said the tape basically just snapped on him. Um, I think it was in very, very poor condition. So perhaps we could do. Um, I'm pretty certain we'll be able to find the um, audio file for it online. So I wonder if we could do a video on perhaps renovating some of these um, games because I mean the boxes are in pretty poor condition. Um, things like that, like I say, it's actually missing the cassette. Perhaps we could perhaps reauthor a cassette for it, um, repair the boxes, do a video on messing about with some stuff like that. Um, again, we've got um, Sphinx Adventure. I'm not exactly sure what the what the game, what the genre of the game is, um, whether it's a graphical adventure, text adventure, or what. But um, again, I've not even tried it. We can see whether it works. Uh, the box again is in pretty poor condition, so we might have a look at see if we can do something with some of these boxes, make them make them decent again. Uh, what else have we got? We've got uh, again superior software alien dropout, but we're missing the cassette. Now Andy did say he might have a few of the other cassettes if he looks around, so we may we may come across that. If not, again we could perhaps just make a replacement for it because I mean. The Acorn like this, except I've got BBC Micros. Um, if I want to seriously mess about with Beeb stuff, I'll get one of my micros out. I've got micro, you know, micro SD um, adapter for it that goes into the um, tube port on the back uh, with a ROM in it, which I can basically load any bit of software ever uh, wrote for the BBC on it. So. I'm not going to bother with possible, yeah, unless um, I find uh, a disk drive interface, one of the original disk drive interfaces going cheap, and they don't generally go cheap, they tend to sell for a lot of money. I'm quite happy with this thing just uh, loading um, games on audio cassette. In fact, I'd like to have quite a little collection of games I can run on my uh, Electron here, just on tape, and I do, I know it sounds daft with having all the modern um, ways of loading um, 
games on your computers, but every now and again I do like just loading off cassette just for the nostalgia of it. So it would be nice to have a collection. Um, so that also we need to um, make a new copy of. We've got um, Commando there, which, um, well, obviously we need to test see if it actually works. I've got one that's unknown. So again, see what's on that. I mean, as well as those, I've actually got some other Electron software which came with some of my other Electrons. Now, I think all this works, but it's so many years since I've actually played with any of the Electron stuff that um, I'm not 100% sure, so we could even try see what we've got here that'll load. I mean, what have we got? Um, is that Mickey Love or something like that? Um, Electron Mickey. Um, I haven't got a clue what it is, but it's um, by Imagine. That's an Electron um, Electron software. We've got um, oh right, we've got Commonwealth Games. That might be worth um, having a look at. See what we can do with that. Like I say, just leave comments. You know, if you want me to see me load some of this stuff up, just give me a shout and leave a comment, and um, we'll see what we can do get the elk um, all set up and see whether we can get any of this software to work but um, like I say if you don't want to see the elk again um, just tell me um, what else have we got here um, I mean, it would be quite nice <laughs> well that's where some fun just seeing we can get some of this software to actually load um, we've got um, Eddie Kids Jump Challenge that could be fun we've got um, what have we got here I think this is another one for the yeah, this is another Electron one. We've got um, Galactic Commander. And we've got um, Way of the Exploding Fist. Like I said, these are all um, Electron versions. I have... The problem is that my other two Electrons, together with a vast majority of my BBC stuff, are all buried up in the attic, where I, I, I honestly can't really get to... Uh, not easily at the moment. So these, they were literally just in um, a drawer in my um, desk drawer there because I've got some BBC disc software down in a um, desk drawer here and some, somehow they had basically ended up in there with that. Um, but it does give us a bit of software we can actually fiddle about with this um, Electron with. Um, like I said, I'm not up to doing any major videos at the moment which involve me spending lots of time getting things out and stuff because I I don't want to make my um, <laughs> don't want to make myself any um, worse I'm uh, having to be very 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 careful um, actually even doing the work in the garden but I really do want to get I'm basically I'm prioritizing getting some of the building work um, I wanted to get done done rather than um, you know, messing about with all computers and making videos and stuff because to be honest that's more productive to me for the rest of the year because I'll, I consider how much I actually saved in growing the vegetables and things that I grew last year it was actually quite surprising um, what I wasn't buying at supermarkets and things like that even just with like the carrots the kale um, things like that crops that basically I managed I, I was able to crop over many many months like and just not harvest in once and have a load of but slowly crop over quite a um, amount of time and I really want to scale that up over this year um, basically I want to try and grow as much as, as, much as my own vegetables as I, um, I can so I am spending a lot of effort on like I said doing these raised beds doing things like that I might do a couple of videos I know they don't they don't get the views that my videos on old computers get on, on my videos on radios and stuff but um, so I might do a little bit of documentation on some of the work I'm doing to build the raised beds and what have you especially considering I'm not the only thing I'm actually buying is um, sand and cement um, everything else I'm using is reclaimed it's um, stuff that was being thrown away by people um, that's kind of one of my ethoses when I'm um, doing building projects. A bit like my summer house. My summer house is probably 80% uh, recycled materials. Perhaps even possibly more than that um, made out of recycled materials. And like I said, my um, raised beds and things are as well.
Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now. Um, I've probably made this video, what, a 20, 30 minute video. Um, that's probably good enough to see how easy it's going to be to actually get <laughs> whether um, the internet is fixed in this area again and I can actually get this video to um, upload okay. So, um, like I said, this video was just a quick look at the elk. Um, just to say, like I said, I'm not dead. I uh, do, I'm planning to make more videos and stuff, but I have been a little bit um, under the weather um, recently. So, um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll leave it there for now anyway. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this little um, update. We can call it a bit of a vloggy kind of mix video, shall we? Um, so, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.